afternoon. Ukrainian Crisis Media Center is happy to present the roundtable devoted to very uh, topical issue. Uh, we will, will have Elena Sviderska as a moderator of this roundtable, but as an, uh, one of the organizers, I would like to um, um, warn you that we have simultaneous translation and we have um, uh, stream in the internet, so I would request all the speakers to speak slowly now for translation. Um, and please uh, remember that if you speed up and become speaking too quickly, I will warn you raising this table. Uh, the discussion is scheduled for one hour and uh, uh, 30 minutes, and now I'm happy to give the floor to the moderator. Uh, dear participants of the round table, dear speakers, uh, thank you for coming. and. Uh, willing to participate in the discussion. Recently, a similar topic was discussed at the annual YES conference, and uh, um, many speakers mentioned that Ukraine has, uh, has big potential in this area, that Ukraine is capable not just uh, produce enough ga gas for its own needs, but also export it. But uh, uh, nevertheless, we need to organize uh, um, uh, this uh, playing field properly, and uh, 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 that's why we invited the ministries, uh, the um, interested stakeholders to discussion what is Ukraine's position in the global gas uh, producing market, what should be Ukraine's strategy, what should be uh, Ukraine's uh, development strategy strategy in terms of uh, um, energy uh, sector development. Uh, as, uh, um, as far as I know, the strategy up to uh, the energy development strategy was developed up to 2030s year, while today we work mostly on uh, fix up uh, of some current problems and it's my pleasure to give the floor to uh, uh, to an expert to Petro Kaznachev uh, his managing partner the consulting company uh, uh, Kaznak Strategies Limited he will share his experience also we will be happy to listen to Mr. Alexandra Volk representing the uh, Volk representing the ministry we will um, uh, listen to Sergei Konovets, Deputy Chairman of NAC Naftagaz of Ukraine, and uh, um, uh, Olena Pavlenka, who has been working with the reform of independent regulators, who is familiar with international experience. So now I, I'm giving the floor to Petro Kaznachev, who will uh, start our round uh, table. He have some uh, up to 20 minutes for presentation. Then the speakers will contribute to discussion, and then we'll have Q&A session. Thank you, uh, Alina. Good afternoon. I'm happy to take the floor here today. This is for the first time when I make presentation in Kyiv on this issue. I'm happy to uh, European Business Association and uh, unfortunately I cannot make my presentation in Ukraine. Mm, I, I'll try to uh, uh, present everything within 20 Ten minutes, uh, um, and I will try to describe why I believe that gas uh, production, gas economy, gas-based economy could become one of the drivers uh, for Ukrainian economy's development. Uh, mm. I will describe the international trends and extrapolate them to Ukrainian situation. One of the main messages of my presentation is uh, uh, the uh, decreasing 
prices uh, on oil and why this happened, uh, why this has happened, and uh, then the role of economic freedom in the economy. The third section of my presentation will be devoted to the role and the share of the state in oil and gas sector, and the fourth section of my presentation will be um, about reform in the sector. And now about uh, um, uh, quotas going down in the markets, uh, and also I will um, yeah, refer to the black swans. Uh, probably many of you uh, heard about the book uh, uh, of Nicholas uh, Telega, um, and one of the books uh, um, is devoted to black swans, uh, uh, literally about uh, the events that uh, uh, people cannot predict and which happen, just happen to be in reality. Uh, I think the uh, past year was extremely rich of such black swans, and uh, there were two major ones which have changed uh, the uh, human history and which were totally unpredictable. The first such event was the war in Ukraine, and the second uh, was uh, uh, the establishment of uh, uh, Gil, uh Islamic State uh, uh, in Iran, Iraq, and uh, which uh, spread over to the North Africa, up to Egypt. Uh, and the third such event was uh, the um, unexpected uh, slope in the um, uh, oil prices. And uh, 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 this, uh, this is a very strange event because always after such a sharp decrease, the sharp growth happens, but this time um, it did not happen. And um, the Russian point of view is about uh, uh, some uh, uh, collate, uh, but uh, yeah, this is an illustration to Gil, which spread over the Middle East. And this is uh, the uh, oil prices going down. This was the biggest uh, and the most sharp uh, decrease since 1982. The comments were like unprecedented. This is a coup, or um, this is a revolt, but actually the revolt started uh, back uh, in uh, uh, 1997, and uh, uh, if you analyze this um, uh, picture, you immediately can see that uh, uh, the abnormal behavior of the oil prices uh, was uh, in the past, uh, uh, was immediately before that previous year. Uh, in 1973, the price went, oil price went up. What did happen? It was famous for uh, Yom Kippur war, and after it, uh, the Arabian oil embargo was introduced, and the oil price went up. Um, this is uh, abnormal. Uh, so the question is why the oil price uh, increased so sharply, and why it uh, kept high during such a long period of time. One of the explanations was that uh, we are in a situation of uh, uh, shortages of oil or other um, energy resources. But the, uh, the, if you analyze this data, we see that it's not the reserves which should be blamed in this uh, um, rise of price. Um, uh, the theory of peak oil uh, is, is wrong because the reserve uh, 
uh, grow with the growth of uh, oil production and uh, uh, mm, so maybe one of the oil price uh, uh, drivers are the war and uh, the conflicts in the Middle East, uh, Yom Kippur, the Iranian revol revolution, then Iran-Iraqi war during 10 years, then uh, invasion to Iraq and uh, victory over uh, Saddam Hussein uh, regime. So all that uh, jumps in prices were following what, one another and suddenly they stopped at some moment and uh, uh, look at 1970, uh, 1973. This is the year when the United uh, States lost uh, leadership in oil production. First, the Soviet Union um, uh, uh, and then uh, the Saudi Arabia won this leading position. So the wind producers became new and the United States remained in this uh, pit uh, um, in production and they remained in that pit up to um, 1996. This was the first year when they won um, uh, the uh, leadership from uh, Saudi Arabia and Russia and uh, while uh, uh, in uh, um, well, six, seven years ago, they won leadership in gas production. So uh, the role of wind producer uh, has uh, transferred from the Middle East and uh, transferred to the United States. Uh, and uh, uh, the uh, Middle East states uh, stopped to play the role which they used to play. Mm, why it is important for Ukraine? First of all, Ukraine is uh, um, dependent on uh, the price, but uh, uh, on the other hand, uh, the, uh, against this background, we see the role of the um, uh, um, uh, shale gas revolution and uh, uh, we should uh, learn this lesson and become more optimistic and now about optimistic approach this slide uh, uh, for some people this glass will look uh, half uh, empty for pessimists uh, this will look uh, uh, sorry half full and uh, um, uh, for others it will be half empty uh, uh, looking at the gas reserves uh, of ukraine official gas reserves uh, this are uh, the most conservative assessments uh, uh, zero uh, point six Seven trillion uh, uh, cubic meters. This is very conservative uh, assessment uh, made by um, by BP in the past. Uh, we have a more optimistic uh, assessment uh, uh, and. Uh, uh, P2P um, reserves. Uh, 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 it could be much higher, up to 2 trillion cubic meters, and here Ukraine finds it uh, among one of the biggest producers, which means that there is a huge potential. On the other hand, look at this picture. There, are, there is uh, up to dozen of countries, uh, the distribution between production and reserves is very uneven. And here, Ukraine, in terms of production, is occupying one of the last positions. And uh, the leader in this group is Malaysia, now, with uh, more than 60 billion cubic meters per year. This is the level where Ukraine uh, 
state during 1960s that level existed in Ukraine um, during uh, the times of Soviet Union. Then due to several processes like depletion of mature fields, maturing fields, uh, Ukraine d decreased its production up to uh, 70-15 billion cubic meters per year. About the countries with uh, a non-realized potential, we can uh, speak uh, much, you know, even more grave examples than Ukraine. Uh, there is uh, Venezuela, where the uh, uh, life uh, standard, despite the third reserves in oil and gas, uh, um, after Russia and Iran, um, uh, they live uh, uh, wor much worse than 30 years ago. Uh, again, Iran, then Libya. Mm -hmm. And uh, you see what happens in Libya today. That's why uh, there is such an expression uh, 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 about the um, uh, um, inevitable corruption uh, in the economies based on oil and gas. But uh, that's not right that each country which bases its economy on the um, oil and gas, they are, um, they inevitably will suffer from uh, corruption. Uh, we looked at several indices at global uh, competition uh, issued by Davos uh, Forum and some others. We uh, split the countries between um, three categories. Uh, and I uh, found out uh, that uh, uh, the first category, the, the strongest countries, are the, um, uh, are the countries with strong institutions. Uh, uh, they do not suffer from corruption and result of uh, oil and gas production. Uh, and that's uh, true that uh, life uh, standard there is rather high. These are Norway, Canada, Australia, Malaysia, Oman, uh, Botswana. Uh, Botswana is uh, not an oil and gas country, but they export uh, um, diamonds. Uh, Chile. What does this prove? This proves that having strong institutions, you can take an economic breakthrough um, with the um, relation upon the natural resources. They say that corruption is inevitable. No, the corruption is not inevitable. Um, look at the uh, biggest, uh, the best countries here. In those countries who are in lead, leading group, they have lower corruption than elsewhere in the world. Concerning the states, <clears throat> it is accepted uh, in literature to say that uh, all of us have come from Gogol's Chanel story. If we take it to economy, it will appear that we will use, uh, we should use the comparison with Dzerzhinsky's military code. Little people know that post-Soviet states became the first ever precedent of mass nationalization of the extraction industry. They would mention Temec in Mexico, but in reality, it was the former USSR who was the first. And Russia was the country that closed that circle. And Latvia was the last one to, to, to nationalize it again. And Ukraine here is unfortunately in a position hard to envy because uh, uh, it has never managed to get rid of this military code of Dzerzhinsky, so to say. 80% of gas extraction is controlled by the state-owned Nafta Gas Company and Ukrnafta, 
And in the last year before uh, Chernomor nefty gas was lost, it was about 89%. But nevertheless, it was a higher indicator than that in Russia, because in Russia the proportion of gas extraction to overall extraction of energy carriers was lower than that, despite the stereotype perception of Russia as the state that where government controls everything. And it is important because something needs to be done with it. If you check the slide with performance results of state and private companies, they're strikingly different and not in the favor of state-owned companies. We carried out a research among six uh, biggest state and six biggest private companies using available data. And we checked for the returns per one barrel of oil uh, or equivalent of gas produced and it appears that private companies when looking at 2013 data were roughly in average 56% per better performance than uh, the state ones. The state one can include state oil say for example or if we go for private sector we might check for BP given the huge penalty they had to pay because of the spill out in uh, Gulf, in the Mexican Gulf and private companies generally uh, have it hard when going elsewhere they had harsher conditions for licensing etc as opposed to state companies Okay, now they say that, well, we still are in the crisis in the economy, overall economic crisis and extraction industry crisis. Some state support should be sought. Okay, let's check uh, for the data from the last year. It was a period when we already were living with reduced oil prices. Still, nevertheless, and in spite of other support, the private companies, rather than reducing their performance, on the contrary, increase it to the hopping 86% level. Which is to say that they are much more efficient in the managing of their own business, even in crisis conditions. And we cannot wait to see the results for this year. So the outcome will show us most unexpected unexpected countries and jurisdictions successfully come into full liberalization and l privatization of uh, oil extraction. Uh, back in the 90s it was clear that when the price went down it was clear that uh, this system of resource-based nationalism didn't work and in such countries as Nigeria, Libya, Iran, Iraq uh, had to launch partial reprivatization. Some countries didn't follow the suit though, Ukraine among them. And the question, a big question remains what to do with it. About lessons to be learned from reform. I already mentioned the role of state-owned companies. What is about, what about uh, private independent companies? Uh, they speak a lot about it in Ukraine, they mention shale gas revolution, etc. But I already mentioned shale oil, and um, I will add to hear that though the United States took the leading position in oil production worldwide for the national economy of the country in terms of national revenues, it was a huge uh, difference, a huge gap. Uh, back in 2012, the input of the shale industry into national economy amounted to 450 billion dollars, around five times the GDP uh, of Ukraine. If we add shale gas here, it will be six to seven times greater than Ukrainian GDP. It created more than one million jobs in the United States. And that was the way they did it. If you ask how did they manage to see 70% increments in oil extraction, how they 
made it to the top of gas producer nations, how they made it so quickly. The response will be there are 13,000 independent companies operating in the United States. You won't need more than t your 10 fingers or maybe even 5 fingers on one hand to count them in Ukraine, but and they account for about 54% of the total gas production. It is, I mean, this, these are not the biggest monsters like Chevron or others, it's or ConocoPhillips or others. They are independent companies that learned how to do fracking, how to process data, the prospecting data, how to do computerized analysis of this data to identify the most performing uh, place. These are those companies that manage to do it in the most efficient way to tell viable, economically viable things from non-viable ones. Uh, so rather than being impressed, we should think about how to use this experience here in this country. If we check for the data now, you will see that the US now have the undisputed leadership in shell gas production. But if we check for the resources, they will be far from the first place because we'll see China and Argentina, Algiers are in the first places. That is, there is no direct comparison, direct relation as in the case with Ukraine. A revolution is possible in conditions of complex uh, extracting conditions. And again, Remember that the oil and gas sector in Ukraine is the, the, the eldest one in the world because they started extracting these resources back in 1861 in Pennsylvania. What other lessons we can draw from here? I uh, seem to have five minutes to go. Okay, it all happened in the period of uh, high prices for these resources. With, uh, the question is whether it is possible to repeat that type of revolution when prices are low. Well, let us be openly frank with one another here. Uh, judging by the opinions of those who, are, who I do respect and know, I think there will be no return of uh, oil prices in the foreseeable future. And these prices of $100 per battle will, will not come. So, still, on the other hand, uh, we've lost, already lost this possibility of attracting investment into the nafta gas of Ukraine, particularly in the current condition. And uh, there are low prospects of finding investments into the company at this stage. Not uh, that I would like to say that it is not possible. We need to check for the experience of countries who managed to increase their extraction and production in low price periods. And we can see that if we take comparable period and take the previous period when four to five time price reduction was found in, um, in a matter of five years or so, now we have about double reduction of it. So, well, Normally, the countries, uh, some of the countries need, uh, would have to go to oblivion because of that, because of quadruple decrease of their proceeds, but nevertheless, they did not. You can check for the graph, uh, take Oman, a uh, very peculiar economy in a country with small population, nevertheless, they managed to develop their oil extraction industry or take Indonesia, or Norway, I already mentioned, historically a fresh uh, newcomer on the oil extraction market, market, and they managed to increase uh, the extraction of oil in the period of low prices, diversifying from gas production to, towards oil. Canada or Malaysia, a very interesting case of Malaysia we have. So Malaysia, Norway, Oman, they did increase their production rates, and this is important, rather than reducing the volume like Saudis did. 
uh, to play in prices and they did make it and they lost their place on the market. And these countries I mentioned, then the country increased their production, but for the purpose that need, we need, they needed to have a very flexible sector, very flexible institutions and that made them go higher in the list, uh, specifically we mean Norway, Malaysia, Canada. And in the case of U Ukraine, this experience might be of particular interest because the, the case of the United States with a shell gas revolution is definitely uh, something to be look, to look into. And by reducing the tax burden, it might be possible to almost double the gas production uh, the way they did in the United uh, Kingdom. And despite certain specifics, the country remains largely independent from international gas supplies, suppliers, particularly from Gazprom. No. Norway reached a five-time increase in gas production and became the first country to extract gas on Arctic shelf. Malaysia became the, became the top-ranking liquefied gas supplier. Uh, the country has a big a multinational company that was not privatized. It is the only one state-owned multinational company, yet they have in the managerial behavior, some signs of experience of the constituting companies uniting them and merging them in one, which allows Malaysia to stay as the prime natural gas and liquefied gas producer and exporter. But still, if you look at Petronas, the Malaysian company, they extract 45% of the output elsewhere, not in Malaysia. They really made an exceptional gimmick by becoming an international, a truly international company. I will also mention Azerbaijan because it is the country with strong legacy assets, with old uh, history and traditions dating well back, well before the time of Soviet Union. And they had rather depleted reservoirs in place and some serious work was necessary at some point in, uh, from international companies like BP, Statoil and others to revive these uh, deposits. Moreover, they had to resolve the transportation problem. They built up new pipelines for oil and gas. Uh, they entered new markets very efficiently in uh, cooperation with international companies. Uh, and uh, this was done. And this might be an interesting experience for Ukraine. All that was uh, done when part of the country remained under occupation and when the country had very problematic uh, relations with the neighbors and to finish up about three scenarios of reforms. I do not say this is uh, um, the scenarios for Ukraine, but this could be used for many countries uh, in Ukrainian similar situation. One is the slow one. It uh, requires a great dual decrease uh, of tax burden, but preservation of the status quo of state company. That is what's going on today. The second scenario is uh, by uh, uh, two-level decrease, um, uh, two-level increase of efficiently. Okay, the states, uh, the state says we have Ukrnafta, nafta gas, etc. Um, this uh, uh, is preserved in state property, but all the rest. Um, of production uh, is given to private business, uh, low and uh, mm, 
uh, flexible taxes, uh, and we create a so-called uh, um, shell gas paradise. Uh, this is not is being done now, but actually this could be done. And uh, um, in result of this scenario, the state companies uh, want to acquire new um, licenses. Uh, while the private companies uh, will uh, deal with the uh, um, uh, effective production from uh, what Ukraine has. And uh, the radical scenario, a shift uh, to the tax on profit, uh, a simplified uh, tax uh, regime for um, uh, uh, shale gas, uh, uh, of course, and uh, uh, very um, tough supervision uh, uh, and uh, with participation of international um, uh, uh, companies and develop uh, active development with assistance and cooperation with international <coughs> companies. So this is actually uh, Azerbaijani scenario. Thank you, Petro. Mm, uh, uh, Olga Belkova has joined us. She's a member of the parliament. Uh, mm, I would like to sum up uh, what Petro said that uh, the availability of gas resources uh, is uh, not making the um, uh, gas driven economy. Uh, there should be uh, efficient producing companies, flexible institutions, and participation of international companies uh, in production uh, together with the, um, the state companies. Uh, in the context, what we have heard, uh, we would uh, like like to hear uh, uh, the opinion by Petrok and the Vets, uh, Deputy Chairman of Naftagaz of Ukraine. What is your vision as to the situation and potential um, increase of, for, for participation of international companies in Ukrainian gas production? Um, uh, uh, well, I will respond to the uh, statements one by one. First of all, I fully agree with Mr. Kaznachev that Ukraine has a huge potential which is not realized in terms of production. If the potential is realized, then within um, five, seven year horizon, Ukraine would be able to raise its own production uh, up to uh, 25, 27 billion cubic meters and uh, and in the future jointly with uh, uh, energy efficiency projects and uh, uh, within the same uh, five, seven years the import uh, of gas to Ukraine might be cut down to uh, five or seven billion cubic meters, and with the next uh, dozen of years, Ukraine can become an exporter of gas. But what should be done? The first, uh, um, uh, the first step uh, is uh, to stir up investment uh, to the. Mm, to this sector in the period of uh, uh, low oil prices. It's uh, uh, not easy, but uh, due to the tax reform initiative, which is now uh, put forward by the Cabinet of Ministers, uh, and uh, sharp decrease uh, in taxes for oil and gas companies. And from 2017, there will be combined uh, taxation of uh, uh, profit and uh, uh, fixed uh, royalty rate. 
as uh, far as I know, I, IHS uh, company jointly with the Ministry of Finance and uh, members of Parliament, uh, consult uh, this consulting committee produced its recommendations um, and uh, supplement uh, um, the uh, suggestion made by the, the cabinet of ministers to the parliament. Uh, the, the suggestion is supplemented by the um, opinion of the, and analysis of this company. So taxation is the, the first uh, step. The second uh, step Step is in direction of deregulation and simplifying business process. Um, uh, for example, uh, issuance of permits, allocation of land plots for uh, subsoil users, and uh, PSA legislation. In case uh, this is done, we will get an opportunity to use uh, that huge potential that mentioned uh, by my colleague. Uh, uh, in Europe, there is uh, uh, mm, uh, uh, similar potential and all these uh, steps uh, towards production um, you know, from uh, explored uh, uh, reserves uh, could uh, make uh, Ukraine uh, energy um, indep uh, uh, independent in terms of energy issues. The second uh, issue was about uh, uh, nafta gas reform. Uh, nafta gas is part uh, reform of nafta gas is part of the gas market uh, reform, and uh, jointly we uh, developed um, and passed. Uh, uh, the new law on natural gas market, the law comes to force uh, on uh, um, October 1st, and currently the Cabinet of Ministers uh, and uh, national regulators do everything possible to make this uh, um, law uh, operational. They pass necessary bylaws. Uh, the uh, the law is aimed at creating actually a gas market and the role of nafta gas uh, in this process is bigger um, uh, actually uh, this process uh, is about destroying the monopoly of uh, nafta gas uh, which uh, sounds like nonsense but uh, uh, we cannot proceed uh, the old uh, way of uh, action in this uh, we want, uh, in this country. That is, uh, oil and uh, nafta gas won't be a single monopolistic supplier to many customers. Uh, the next objective of this reform is uh, to bring in gas tariffs to the um, economically based. Um, level and uh, shift from subs subsidies to nafta gas to the direct subsidies uh, to vulnerable groups. Uh, um, direct subsidies are more socially fair um, than uh, general subsidies to nafta gas because uh, when subsidies are provided to specific uh, families, uh, households, uh, they are mm, paid uh, uh, directly to those in need instead of paying for everybody. Thus, uh, the, the, uh, also this will promote demonopolization and integration of Ukraine to the European uh, market. Now, um, you know, we are um, uh, carrying out unbundling uh, activities and the future GTS operator will be uh, uh, 
separated from um, uh, nafta gas. Uh, we also sign up interconnection agreements uh, with operators from neighboring uh, countries. We have signed similar contracts with Hungary. We plan to sign it with Poland, with uh, Slovakia, and we will. Thus, we will integrate to the European market of the natural gas. Uh, it will be possible to buy and uh, sell natural. Uh, gas in Europe. This will be beneficial not just for um, traders, uh, but also for producers and customers, because the competition in the market uh, is for the benefit of the customer. As for nafta gas itself, mm. In the context of uh, gas market reform, uh, we um, do much uh, to change uh, the corporate management of uh, nafta gas together with the uh, uh, international uh, companies we have drafted uh, uh, the action plan for nafta gas reform uh, <coughs> uh, in in corporate management the first uh, is uh, is uh, transfer from uh, hand uh, and uh, made so to say management on behalf of the cabinet of ministers um, and uh, uh, involvement of special uh, counsel uh, who who will um, manage the company uh, actually. Um, as of today, the state is owner of uh, nafta gas, and uh, nafta gas should become uh, an, a value, uh, an added value producer for the entire nation. Uh, instead of uh, that, today some short-term benefits sometimes prevail in decision making uh, about uh, nafta gas we should uh, uh, make uh, we should establish a to totally independent supervisory council who will uh, supervise uh, the um, the company uh, just like in norway where the state owns start oil but uh, the state the government cannot interfere in the operations of start oil uh, then in oecd countries uh, state companies are managed very transparently uh, everything is transparent uh, uh, operational results of the company, uh, procurement operations, uh, and uh, based on these results, the management should get its uh, uh, remuneration based on the income of the company. I believe that those standards and reforms uh, are uh, implemented uh, uh, not in relation to nafta gas company but uh, in relation to many um, state-owned companies this is the minister of economy which is undertaking this reform we are sure that this reform would allow us to uh, to to improve the situation uh, presented at the slide uh, showing uh, state and private uh, showing performance of state and private oil and gas companies our aim is to create value for you, for the ukrainian people uh, thank you very much i think we've covered all of the matters we wanted to hear and you also mentioned conditions for market liberalization and it might be interesting to hear a comment on that from Ms. Uh, Olga Belkova, an MP and the head of the Honorable Committee on Fuel and Energy Complex. We'd like to hear about legislative initiatives in the Parliament, 
what has been lobbied, what has been supported, and what is envisaged to reform the oil and gas sector in Ukraine. Uh, thank you. It's a pleasure to have this topic discussed today because uh, recently all topics on uh, gas were reduced to the only question of whether there is cheap gas in Ukraine. And because of that, I'd like to start with some political statements that I would really like to to present here. Then I will go to legislative initiatives related to that. I think these days the society is already ready to separate the matter of utility tariffs, subsidies, and gas issues. MP is dealing with oil and gas sector development are entirely different ones than those dealing with social uh, benefits and social supports and social justice. It is not possible to resolve, say, food supply matters in country by constantly debating any the issue of uh, taxes on food industries. And for some reason, they think uh, that uh, the gas extraction industry is the only one that, uh, about which many people say that by overtaxing it, it may be possible to finally get cheap gas. We need to separate, to weed out dreams from realities and facts of life here. Unfortunately, there is a dream which is not accessible for us. It is about the cheap gas, and there is no such gas in Ukraine, but the real reality is to become independent from Russia also with the help of supplies, gas supplies from Europe, but this may not happen overnight. Uh, the more time we lose on that, the more lag we are going to have between uh, facts of lights and our dreams. What can be done to make the step from dreaming to realities? Uh, first of all, we need to think about better access to the market, better business opportunities, better investments. Uh, these are the things that politicians have to keep in mind when speaking about building independent energy sector in Ukraine. The current situation in the country is that the greatest potential, long-term potential, is concentrated uh, exactly in the sector of state-owned companies. But these public companies are overburdened with the backlogs of debts, poor corporate management, all-time management managers, and they're really ill-suited to pick up speed in current conditions. They do need partners with private investments, and I'm totally supportive of the government's idea uh, that largely reflects opinions of independent experts uh, and economists, uh, those dealing with uh, attracting investments in the area. And this concerns the idea of the draft legislation 2350A, because this one suggests an idea of a compromise solution that would allow for the development of the said industry in, in a matter of one or two years, uh, the first boost private companies will receive, but with some time, I think our colleagues from state-owned public companies like Naftagas and others will come up with their programs, investment programs, etc., to show that there are no economic orphans in Ukraine. And really, all the companies, extracting companies working with hydrocarbons on comparable conditions in Ukraine do need to have similar equal fiscal conditions. The government may not, may not continue imposing new taxes on state companies whenever it wants more money. And this brings up a question whether we are really ready to implement the law of Ukraine on natural gas market in the country, because it reflects one of the biggest reforms and we were proud about this law to, be, to have it adopted and we called ourselves reformers, but now we hear voices about us 
being not ready, about the whole thing being a bit untimely. Yet there are matters that can completely be agreed upon before 1st of this October. Uh, surely much depends on the Parliament, given the current situation with coalition. But I will do my best to make my to convince my colleagues in the Parliament that this should not be postponed for the late for later. Uh, particularly with the view of uh, external assessments of the success of reform in Ukraine done by international communities and experts. I attended a conference uh, some time ago and there is a nice there was a nice phrase that I really liked it I'm not sure how to translate it into Ukrainian but I, uh, you can I can quote it to you in English uh, uh, the phrase uh, translates into Ukrainian as because this really refutes the old, old approach that was, uh, that was built on corruption, on extra taxes, uh, leading the country into a dead end and together with other colleagues and foreign experts we work on another piece of legislation to change the whole fiscal approaches uh, to simplify entry to the market and so general working conditions for joint companies and uh, I can tell my colleague uh, from the company who spoke before me that I managed to collect 10 signatures uh, from the committee and line uh, authorities to to have their okay and approval of these matters uh, this legislation is about a uh, really serious problem about companies living through hard times at the beginning of the operations uh, them owing a lot to landowners to local and central government etc but on the other hand everyone says that we do need natural gas, we want natural gas. And still when it comes to some specific real investor coming into the ground, then local, even local governments began, uh, begins playing with uh, papers, with permissions, with their capacities of assisting the process. Uh, for that purpose we held wide range consultations with uh, sectoral companies to come up with this piece of legislation. This is a bill 3358 on fiscal changes to legislation on extracting industries in Ukraine. And it, I think it will send a very positive signal also to local and regional governments in terms of their much needed commitment to speed up every agreement it is necessary to boost up production. Uh, another matter is a huge problem of, with uh, uh, PSAs uh, that we have had, are having and going to have, and because of that I submitted a bill uh, 3027 to avoid certain discrepancies uh, also in the fiscal code to release any investor, existing or potential one, uh, from certain fiscal and other financial arrangements. There is a group of people in the Parliament who are rather positive towards and respect, are uh, rather respectful towards the, the, the reforms and the changes needed by the sector and they show really real respect to everyone willing to openly and transparently develop their business and uh, you can be assured of my fullest support of them here. My colleagues in the committee and MPs in the Interfaction Committee on en for Energy Security of Ukraine and everyone else willing to contribute with ideas to promote parliamentary decisions on that. Please welcome to cooperation. 
thank you, Olga, for your support of the oil and gas extraction sector and for your analytical input on that. We uh, also participated in this work from AC Business, from the Ministry of Energy. We actually participated in the development of new drafts and we are ready to move further on that. Uh, now I think it's time to hear some comments from the Ministry of Fuel and Energy as regards the current state of reform, as regards our expected way in which we move and what to be, what, what to be expected from the sector. Uh, Alexander Wolf, my name is. Uh, thank you for this possibility to speak about the situation and prospects of the oil and gas sector of Ukraine. If we check for the gas balance for this year, it's entirely clear we have about 40 billion of all internal consumption and about 20% of uh, imports and about 20 billion uh, of uh, local production. But the question is how the sector will look like in five years and uh, where is the proper place for oil and gas extraction industry in the country in general. If you look on Romania we can see that about 10 years ago they were pretty much the same situation as we are currently now. Uh, they extracted a bit uh, uh, around of uh, one hundredth of the total consumption, uh, importing the rest. And now they speak that they are fully independent and they are going to export the re resources to Moldova. How they, did they manage to do it? Uh, it was a twofold effort. They reduced their consumption uh, from 21 roughly billion to around 13 billion this year uh, in about a decade, an impressive figure. On the other hand, they increased their production. Uh, they were successful in supporting internal production uh, and they also developed a new uh, line of business, extracting gas in the shelf area uh, in the Black Sea. This sets a clear example for Ukraine as to how to reach uh, the energy independence. Unfortunately, the events of the, pre of the previous year, the past year, showed no coherent strategy of energy sector development in the country. <coughs> uh, about exactly one year ago they increased uh, rental fees and it was said that they would do it uh, by, uh, by the end of until the end of 2014 but then uh, they decided to make it more permanent and then uh, question uh, remained with the uh, PSAs uh, because of new rental agreements and new coefficient was included for new wells and there was a resolution on actual sales of extracted uh, resources to Naknafta Gas uh, in an attempt to improve the liquidity of the market though it didn't work in this direction. Now these problems are and the solution uh, on the way towards a solution and Olena did mention what has been done now and we'd like to thank the parliamentary committee for their assistance and involvement. Uh, the ministry was actively involved this summer in, uh, uh, in the work of uh, the drafts that have been already registered and these concerned changes to the uh, land, legislation on land, the one on urban development and on simplify, uh, simplification of mining permits for extraction enterprises. Now the question is about the future prospects. If we have an open look on that we need to understand what do we need to attain. There are two interests of the state in the sector. It is about the natural gas and taxes, tax collections. Surely tax collections for the sector should be a bit different 
given that under the constitution the subsoil belongs to the nation and its residents. Uh, essentially, you may not have both lux uh, of uh, get, uh, getting more tax collections and increasing production. Uh, the state company currently provides for 14, extracts 14 billion cubic meter of gas from the joint activities. And if we, uh, we need to understand whether we want to expand production or we would rather force on royalty payments as the key source. And this is for the ministers to answer. Uh, questions remain open is how much the gas really costs here. And it is really related because this is one big wallet that everyone uses uh, for his own gains. But then again, it is about the budget deficit and the deficit and indebtedness of uh, Naknafta gas. Uh, we do expect to have answers to this within the coming year, given that the Ministry of Energy finally wants to develop a coherent strategy of development for the coming five years. And we will attract all stakeholders, experts, uh, uh, also from the Ministry of Environmental Protection, uh, businesses, uh, our international partners like EBID and the World Bank. We will in invite foreign advisors and consultants to come up with a concept strategy of where we want to be and how we are going to go there. Thank you, Alexander. I think one of the objectives of this meeting is uh, to agree about the direction um, and to develop the strategy for the market and how to attract investors. Uh, now I am happy to invite Olena Pavlenka to the microphone. She had uh, been uh, working on the oil and gas law. Uh, oil and gas market law. She is really an expert. Um, I will quote Mr. Walk. Let's speak about the future. When uh, uh, the U.S. billionaire mentioned that uh, the uh, game is uh, play is uh, won by those who focuses on the playing the field, but not on the future result. Uh, mm, so Ukraine should focus on the rules of the game, but not on the rates, uh, but not on the tax rates. Uh, mm, those who win in this sector globally, these are countries with strong institutions. Uh, um, uh, uh, Canada, Norway, the United Kingdom, they compete for investors and create favorable conditions. Uh, last year, jointly with the UK and uh, uh, Canadian Embassy, we carried out a uh, uh, um, research survey trying to understand how the, these countries manage to attract investors. Um, they they follow two important rules. Um, uh, the first rule is so-called one wise. When investor comes to the country and uh, starts uh, to negotiate with the um, uh, the. Authorities, uh, the, the, the authority speaks one voice, says yes, and assists this investor. As of today, in Ukraine, investor faces multiple voices from authorities or silence at all. The second important role is to assist instead of uh, making obstacles. Uh, um, looking at Canada, Australia, uh, we see how quickly uh, the investors can uh, get uh, uh, licenses for production. Actually, in those countries, it takes uh, uh, several months. Uh, there, it uh, it takes several months after initial uh, negotiation. In Ukraine, this can take several years. The investor has to negotiate with central authorities and local authorities and get a lot of permits and uh, only afterwards go to um, 
to, to real work. I think one of the most important issues which should be um, yeah, of, should become of special attention for the future uh, is uh, to concentrate on the major elements. The first uh, rule is uh, decentralization in regulation. All the functions which could be delegated from the center to the local um, level should be delegated. In Australia, the land allotments are uh, made by absolutely local uh, authority, community authority. The uh, center only is interested in uh, some taxes and health care, etc. Uh, then uh, many countries uh, um, find efficient ways how to how to deal with investor and how to speak efficiently one voice. In Australia, there is the concept of leading agency. When uh, an investor arrives to the country, he is immediately um, supplied with a um, uh, civil servant who coordinates and assists uh, uh, the, this investor in uh, all uh, the contacts with other government agencies. Uh, and the next important I issue is transparency, is uh, openness. Uh, the openness is needed, the transparency is needed uh, not, to not, not just to investors, it is very important for government authorities to show that there is no corruption. And uh, this is uh, um, very important for local communities because investors will go to local destinations and all sorts of possible conflicts should be prevented via existing dialogue with the local communities. Uh, I think that these are mm, good uh, materials for our um, uh, government officials uh, and uh, I believe we are ready to assist uh, government officials and uh, hope that uh, in the nearest future we will um, become one of the most efficient countries. Uh, thank you, Elena. I think that uh, and hope that we will be able to bring together all the market agents to build up efficient gas producing sector. Um, now I'm happy to announce Q&A session Please don't forget to introduce yourself. Uh, I'm Olga Bosak. I'm a question to Petro Kaznachev. The first question, how do you think why the United Kingdom, why Norway, um, and while well, such companies as Statoil uh, managed to preserve such energy independence such a uh, big level of energy independence from um, Gazprom. What allowed them to remain independent? And uh, the second question, you, pre you presented your vision of reforms and you mentioned three possible scenarios, three possible options. Now you've heard our a government's position that was a representative from the Ministry of Energy, which is a driver of uh, um, gas sector, oil and gas sector reform in Ukraine. And you heard the opinion um, from the parliament, from energy sector of the parliament. What are your comments as to their um, vision of uh, Ukrainian gas sector reform? Well, about uh, energy independence of uh, the United Kingdom and Norway. The situation is uh, uh, not uh, um, uh, su su such simple. Norway does not have huge population and they have huge reserves of gas. 
uh, it, it's quite easy to gain energy independence having a low population and huge uh, reserves of gas. Uh, in the United Kingdom, the situation is not as uh, sim uh, that simple. They have much bigger population and uh, rather depleted and mature fields uh, on, uh, offshore. The situation is similar to Ukrainian one, except such a detail that Ukrainian um, mature and depleted fields are onshore. Uh, and of course, uh, in the United Kingdom, they, similarly to Ukraine, had um, uh, uh, different opinions and a lot of political fighting around uh, um, the ways uh, for the sector development and uh, they decided to allow the sector to breathe out and uh, uh, which finally resulted in increased tax revenues from the sector. As uh, for the um, suggestions uh, suggested scenarios. Uh, I had been uh, listening to the interlocutors and uh, felt happy for Ukraine. I uh, um, uh, uh, spoke to many governments. For example, in Nigeria, they have much more serious problems in Nigeria um, than in Ukraine. And uh, not so often, I should confess, I hear such coincidence in, uh, in my views and in the measures about which I have heard. I am absolutely agree and I can uh, sign it. You can tax your way uh, out of a crisis. That is, the um, taxes cannot be a solution. Uh, looking at uh, purely taxes, you may omit uh, the huge profit in the future. Of course, those profits are not um, guaranteed. There are no guarantees that you will gain that profits finally but if this happens the momentum the push up for economy development will be uh, uh, much larger uh, than any possible tax revenue uh, because uh, 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 the uh, sector development will mean huge liberalization across the board. The companies coming to Ukraine, coming to work to Ukraine, uh, would find favorable climate here. They will spend uh, their money here. They will uh, boost out the neighboring uh, sectors. Uh, mm and services. I believe this may become a huge success of Ukrainian reform and I'm happy uh, about this coincidence in our views. Uh, dear colleagues, do we have any further questions? Uh, we still have uh, 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 s some time allow, and I would allow speakers to share their final opinion. I would add here that not everything is as good as it may seem because in reality we have people at the ta table that are single-minded ones and I need to confess that uh, many times we see parliament being won over by populist slogans and calls and I would really like to ask for assistance also from the expert community from the media to debunk these myths, populist myths. And it's really nice to see it quietly and nicely to see how the reforms will ultimately develop and where they will end. But I need also to say that uh, Naknafta Gaz will never be able to deal with the whole of the reform, even despite the highly professional young team. Ukurgaz uh, Vidobovania will not make it on its own either with all the world against them and they're being on the brink of a very complex financial situation. 
and peace, truly believe in free markets, conditions in the need to change the energy sector, in the need to get rid of uh, paternalism of uh, big bosses that used to rule the, the sector for decades, but they will never do this alone. Uh, they had a, a good chance to work in the parliament in the section of MPs where everything was positive. It was about IT sector. And this industry we are speaking about, despite of being of fundamental uh, importance in terms of overall figures and on, on terms of its impact on social development of, of the country, still is ridden with stamps and popular slogans to the extent that without assistance from civic society it will never be able to do it alone. And I think uh, these days we see just first early efforts uh, when those big energy bosses uh, try to cut short the reform under the guise of them uh, thinking after people and their social security. I would really like to call all of you to tell weeds from chaff in this situation uh, in favor of true reforms and I would really like to take this occasion to address uh, Naknafta Gazi once more to say that uh, the first call from the market was about the fiscal regime uh, the second one to be expected is about reforms in the Nafta Gaz to see how it will let more players on the market and uh, improve its efficiency and performance as well. Please inform us about uh, things happening at yours and uh, how the national budget is optimized in terms of reducing NAFTA gas deficit. And this will surely bring more supporters of those uh, harsh reforms that we are facing now and even those have to pay higher tariffs for gas will better understand why they will be doing it and what it will bring in the outcome as the outcome thank you olga and i would also like to respond to this it is a very important question the one of uh, prices for natural gas much hullabaloo around that already and and uh, the political parties saying that it is not right please uh, bring the tariffs back because the Ukrainian gas is extremely cheap and let us sell it at production price. This is a flawed perception <coughs> because, anyway, why wouldn't we sell wheat at its production cost? Uh, this is the bad idea from, from the very beginning. It is contrary to the market economy principle. And we have been told that we have poor population who is not able to pay that high tariff, but then they are not also not able to pay for their food, for the shelter, for electricity. So the question is about having targeted subsidies to, he to help the livelihood of the people. Uh, yet still we have this very strong and uh, myth about cheap Ukrainian gas. to the extent that if we stop our extraction and will not spend anything, uh, there will be no production costs. Uh, we will, there will be still some inflow of gas, but it won't last long. Uh, this is about this uh, populist policy about Ukraine's cheap gas. Uh, exactly this position led us to this tremendous reduction for 53 billion cubic meter production to the current at around 20 billion. If you want to become a country like Norway is, which is a huge gas producer, producer but uh, they never sell their gas on the domestic market at the production cost price. Uh, or are we really willing to follow the example of uh, Venezuela with soldiers? taking prices and monitoring prices at superstores. 
That is to say that if you want to have an efficient system like they have in Norway, we need to have a very targeted and pur purposeful subsidy system addressed exactly to those who need it. So yes, if you want to be a second Venezuela, then we need to impose introduced uh, regulated prices, nationalize everything and hope for the gut. There are many people who hear these populist calls uh, from their tellies, uh, in the newspapers, and they have no idea about realities of life. And just, you know, judging from the statistical data of three wells, new wells drilled, just one will be productive. That is, but you will have to pay for three of these. And uh, there will be there will be this burden of cost involved. Uh, really, yes, indeed, this is in ownership of the whole of the people in Ukraine. But again, if the company will make profit, it uh, rather than borrowing from the budget will provide revenues for the budget and this will provide more money uh, to be spent on a variety of purposes whether it be hospitals or subsidies to the poorest strata of population and new schools etc and the system that uh, pre-existed essentially would transpose all these problems as headaches for the national uh, budgets, 96 uh, billion grivnes re were received by Naftagaz back in 2014, and we do expect the Tobin to reform already in 2017, and has been already, by the way, included as a government's commitment in the pa joint paper with the World, Fund, uh, World uh, Bank. It will become a budget donor, that is, rather than taking money from the budget, will be contributing, replenishing the budget. And owing to reform, these funds will be used for any purposes, also for energy saving measures on new projects, etc. And because of that, uh, I would strongly advise everyone to understand the nature of this reform because it is not about pushing people into paying an acceptable price for on something, but rather on establishing an efficient performing market to eliminate corruption, uh, to eliminate this corruption margin on the market and to, to um, make this market really performing. And we need to understand that there will be no energy independence without this market and there will be no expansion of the market and there will be, there will be no independence from Russia. Thank you for raising this new message, and I'd like to mention a very interesting phrase. Uh, 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 Tony Blair mentioned it at a press conference a week ago. Uh, it can be translated as... Uh, the true task of every one of us is to speak and talk about reforms, explain the reforms, and help then proceed uh, to shape the public opinion in the right way. And we have a little announcement from Olga, I think. I think let's proceed with your uh, announcement given the shortage in time. I've spent a lot of time lately looking into the experience of other countries and one of the fundamental uh, questions for a country like Ukraine is uh, PSA and this mechanism is one of the promising ones uh, first of all for public companies but it is underused and uh, there are some hidden and obvious reasons for that uh, and on 23rd of September uh, our committee will have hearings on that and those interested in the topic are cordially invited to that seating. It will start at 2.30 p.m. and we expect it to be held in a big conference hall in the parliament building. Those willing, please come to me for an invitation or explanation of the procedure of getting an invitation. 
Thank you. I think we'll keep in touch and we will surely work over the strategy and use all the accumulated experience we have just discussed until our next meeting. And we'd like, uh, on behalf of the uh, Ukraine Crisis Media Center Media Project on Reform, thank you for this uh, presentation. And a special notice to Naknaftagaz representative. Uh, it is one of probably the first time that your company, uh, through you, has spoken to the people in a very natural uh, way, in natural language, without those uh, legalese or bureaucraties. And it really works for the better, and we will gladly contribute uh, to your efforts. Thank you.